This is wide receiver Jeremy Curley of the New York Jets, and you're listening to the Shorts Sports Show. Welcome everybody to the Short Sports Show. I am your host Daniel Short. Today is Friday the 13th. Friday, November 13th, 2015. Um, I don't know how I feel. It's uh, being Friday the 13th. I'm not a huge superstitious type person, but my high school. Uh, as, as I guys told, I've told y'all before, um, they, they're in the playoffs for the first time since 2007. 2007, ladies and gentlemen, um, and, and we're finally in the playoffs. The thing is, the first game is tonight. I had no idea it was Friday the 13th until last night. I was like, oh, great. You know, this is just going to be a weird game. This team that we are playing, we should should beat, but you, you never really know. With high school playoffs, Texas high school playoffs, you never truly know, and so it's going to be an exciting game. Uh, all the way in Harlandale High School in San Antonio. I will be there tonight um, and, and hopefully watching the San Marcos Rattlers win the game. Shout out to them. Uh, I did hear one of, my, one of my good friends who plays on the team said that the head coach was showing the video that I took, which you can find on my YouTube channel, The Short Sports Show. Go ahead and get the link is down below in the description. Go ahead and click a like on there and subscribe. But anyways... Um, he actually showed the video from the last, um, I, I don't know, I think it was more of the celebration he showed in the interview, uh, but he also might have shown the you know the last play because there's two clips of it, um, and, you know, which is awesome, hey, awesome, getting the word out there, that's just what you got to do, <laughs> but anyways, so I'll be out there tonight, um, but we got a jam-packed show for you guys talking about college football, some news, uh, what not to do when you are a talk host and reporter it it's uh we'll talk about that some tcu n- news that uh brought me to tears and then brought joy of tears I, it was just a mix of emotions yesterday uh we have that uh as well as previewing some of these games for college football um we'll talk about some of the rankings and then the nfl and uh talking about those uniforms last night i, I mean for some people who aren't colorblind it was pretty cool. I like the Jets low, uh, the, the the chrome on it. I love the green on it. Um, I was hoping the Bills would add chrome to their helmet too. You know, chrome face mask and getting the red chrome and the blue chrome on there. I, I thought that would have been a nice touch. They didn't. They just had the normal helmet. But I, I did like the all red, the all green. I would have liked it had it been the actual Jets green color. Not this lime green that they were wearing. It was, I don't know. Uh, but there apparently um, a lot of fans who are colorblind had a very hard time watching the game. We'll talk about that in just a minute. First, let's go through some college football news. And that was affecting TCU and, 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 and all of our fans. Uh, TCU's Jocks, Josh Doxson, uh, despite reports earlier Thursday saying that he was out for the entire season because of a wrist injury he um, that occurred against Oklahoma State. He will play Saturday against Kansas. Gary Patterson did tell ESPN and did tweet that Josh Doxson will play and that he's going to be good to go. Patterson told ESPN that he was misunderstood during a serious XM radio appearance earlier Thursday and that he was just trying to say that Doxson, who is the FBS leader in receiving yards, will be gone in four games because he's a senior, and that the team needs to be prepared with, uh, you know, with life without Josh Doxson, uh, and how this offense is going to roll. That's what he was saying. The guy who was either I don't know, the producer, the audio editor, the the guy who conducted the interview. I have no idea. He tweeted out saying that Patterson said Josh Doxson's out for the year. And it was like, oh, man, that was just our worst fears because um, there were reports saying that he might be out for the entire year, but we just didn't know yet how, how big the injury was. And next thing you know, you know, it's reported. Oh, great. You know, just all the injuries that have happened to us, it's, it's been ridiculous. So 
thinking that was what's going to happen, that we were going to miss Doxon, who has 78 catches, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns. He currently ranks number one nationally in catches per game and number two in receiving yards per game. He holds TCU career records for receiving yards with 2,773 and total uh, touchdown catches with 29. He is two away from the record for career uh, receptions despite having only played three seasons for the Horned Frogs after transferring from Wyoming back in 2012. Um, So, yeah, I thought we were going to lose him, and uh, it was obviously right there. You you see how great he is, Uh, obviously, and I'm not being biased. He's he's the great the best receiver here in college football this season. I know everybody's going to say Corey Coleman because all the touchdown catches, but um, Doxon is just more polished, more complete wide receiver out there, more pro style ready. I know they Baylor and TC run the same offenses, but if you look at each of them and you see what they can bring and how they can transition their game to the NFL, Doxon has the easier road ahead of him. He's just more polished. And so losing him is going to be huge, you know, after this season, of course. And I thought, this season already but one thing I do disagree with is him playing against Kansas especially just in in a short week or I guess a normal week whatever but uh, having that injury against Oklahoma State Kansas is not a team we really need Doxon at I, I, I don't want him playing I'd rather have him make sure he's as close to if not a hundred percent by the time we play Oklahoma next week because then it gets into a short week after that. We play Oklahoma next week, next Saturday, and then the following Friday after that, the Black Friday, we play Baylor. We need him to be close to 100%, if not 100, with those two games. Kansas, it does not matter if we don't have him. We have enough talented players to beat Kansas without Josh Jackson. So... I really hope he's probably just saying that. Maybe he'll just suit up and just say, you know what? We decided not to play him. That's what I'm hoping for. Patterson knows what he's doing, though. There's a reason he is coaching, and I am over here behind the mic. But I, I just, I really do not want to see Doxon playing against Kansas unless somehow it goes back to, like, what last year game was, and it, we need him. But I really don't want Doxon playing. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, Texas A&M has sued the Indianapolis Colts for infringing uh, infringing rot on its trademark of the 12th man. At a Board of Regents meeting Thursday, the school chancellor, John Sharp, revealed that Texas A&M filed suit in the U.S. District Court in Houston after repeated attempts to stop the Colts from using its registered trademark uh, went unsuccessful. The suit filed Thursday alleges the school first contacted the Colts in 2006 about the use of the phrase inside their stadium and sent a cease and desist letter, uh, which the school said fell on deaf ears. The Colts retired the 12th man in the ring of honor in 2008, according to the suit, were warned uh, were warned again by Texas A&M that the team was infringing on the mark the school had owned. The tipping point came in July when the uh, when an email advertisement to sell tickets, the Colts encouraged fans to quote join the twelfth man. End quote. The school officials discovered the infringement uh, when a person in the College Station, home of Texas A&M, received the email. It's like the worst area, but I don't understand why they know. If the Seahawks, which are basically the twelfth man in the NFL, and they've already you know settled a deal with the Seahawks. Or with the excuse me with the, with A and M, why would any other team do it in the NFL, and why would they get close knowing that A and M is is going to push them and, and and go legal action? It's like why even deal with it? Colts said, "Screw it, we're going to try anyways." In addition, the Colts have used quote the twelfth man to sell merchandise and have been honoring fans with the twelfth man award during games in which the honoree honoree uh, receives a Colts jersey with the twelfth on the front. Excuse me. Uh, this this is the second time the Aggies have filed a suit to protect their twelfth man trademark. In 2006, they filed a lawsuit against the Seattle Seahawks for using the phrase without being authorized. The result was a settlement that allowed the Seahawks to license the phrase for five thousand dollars a year, but that did not include the right to sell merchandise with that phrase on it. Instead, the Seahawks sold the twelve jer- number twelve jerseys with the nameplate "fan" on the back, which obviously has become very popular. And you see a lot of Seahawks fans um, anywhere with that jersey. 
Uh, the Seahawks renewed their 12th man license for the past 10 years through June 2016, and it is not clear if they will continue to do so, which I believe they should. Um, and, and the story goes all the way back for Texas A&M, goes back to 1922 when a student named E. King uh, Gill came out of the stands and got in uniform ready to play if called into action. It's why the Aggie fans stand throughout the games, a symbol of w- the willing sacrifice of, Gr- of Gill and the role they played in the game. Uh, the Texas A&M has four registered trademarks to the 12th man, the, with the first filed back in 1990. So Colts, um, I don't know. Y'all really don't even have a 12th fan. Your fans are not that cheerful uh, or loud like the Seahawks. Or I mean, you can even make... A, if, if another team other than the Seahawks, you want to talk about the 12th man, you could easily say... Kansas City, and maybe the Patriots. Maybe the Patriots. That, that's kind of like a throw in the dart. Um, but the can't, only Kansas City because of them and Seahawks each year trying to go after the louder decibel uh, amount of noise. So, you know, that's that's what I would say uh, between those two schools or two teams, that would be the NFL's 12th man. But Colts, you're nowhere near. I, I, I don't know why you're doing this. Uh, Florida State. We'll go back to quarterback Everett Golson on, uh, for Saturday's game against North Carolina State after he missed the last two weeks. Seminoles head coach Jimbo Fisher named Golson the starter Thursday. Redshirt junior Sean McGuire started the last two games and went 1-1 one one, but lost to number one Clemson last week. Um, Golson, again, suffered a concussion in the October 24th loss to Georgia Tech, and he missed the following game against Syracuse despite passing the concussion protocol. McGuire threw for 348 yards and three touchdowns in this place, and Fisher kept him as a starter uh, the following week against Clemson. Now, again, going against one of the top defenses in college football, there's only so much you can do. McGuire was 16 of 29 with four, uh, excuse me, for 164 yards and one interception against the top-ranked Tigers, but Fisher said McGuire, quote, managed the game very well. Uh, in seven starts, Golson has thrown for 1,600 yards and 11 touchdowns to only one interception, but it really hasn't made any big type of plays that they were hoping to get with him going there. Um, you know, I would have liked the scene since McGuire kind of, you know, he didn't struggle, but when you have Dalvin Cook, who I believe almost rushed for 200 yards, it was like 194 or something, when you got him controlling the ground game, you should be able to open things up. I talked about it on Monday. Should be able to open things up through the passing game more than 164 yards, no matter what defense you're playing. With an almost 200-yard rusher, you should be able to exploit the passing game just a little bit, get some big plays going here and there. McGuire wasn't able to get get that done. I would have thought maybe at some point you throw in Everett Golston. You say, hey, all right, McGuire's not getting the big plays that we need to keep these drives alive. He's not doing any of the big things that we need him for. Go in and, and, and do the best you can do. That didn't happen, but Golson will start now against North Carolina State tomorrow. Um, what I guess not really the breaking news, but something that came out uh, yesterday was dash cam footage of Dave T. Barrett's arrest on Halloween revealed the Ohio State quarterback somewhat ego. It, once in handcuffs, the redshirt sophomore asked if there was anything the officer could do to help him. The video initially obtained by TMZ also includes Barrett cussing to himself twice once he was put in the back of the police cruiser telling officers that teammate Cardell Jones was on his way to pick him up. He said, quote, I mean, I'm the quarterback of at Ohio State. Officer, there isn't nothing you can do. Um, the officer replied that Quote, his intentions are not to take you to jail. And quote, the Barrett will play, or excuse me, will pay a $400 fine and have his license suspended for six months after pleading guilty Tuesday for operating a vehicle under the influence, uh, a misdemeanor. In addition, Barrett will, uh, must complete a three-day alcohol education program that as a result of the incident when he was stopped at a DUI checkpoint earlier on October 31st. Uh, he must complete the class and pay the fine by fe- February 15th or face jail time. 
Uh, on the field, Barrett's situation for the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes has also been resolved as he is in line to start for Saturday's game against Illinois. An Ohio State spokesman said Thursday, quote, We are aware of this video. The events that prompted um, have been addressed and we are moving on. End quote. Barrett was suspended one game by head coach Urban Meyer and lost his 2016 summer financial aid as a result of the OVI. And he watched the Buckeyes 28 to 14 win over Minnesota last week in the press box. Jones, who started in his place, accounted for more than 250 total yards, protecting the team's undefeated record and moving on. Now, I, I don't think I'll stick too much time onto this. Um, I don't know. Because what it looked like in the in the beginning when this was all reported that he was saying that they left out isn't at first. When they released the quote, they didn't really release the video. They just released the quote of what he said, uh, saying that there was video of it, saying, Officer, there's nothing you can do. And I was like, whoa. I thought this was going to start a, you know, huge, send a huge shock wave. And then once everybody was able to get the video and really hear it and stuff, and then they added, isn't. There is, he's asking, officer, there isn't nothing you can do. He's asking him, is there anything you can do? Um, but I don't know. Ohio State, what are you going to do? Uh, real quick, we'll go through the rankings. As all of you most likely have already seen and have heard the rankings so far uh but of course since they don't release them till tuesday we do shows mondays and fridays in case you haven't checked in case you know you've just been out of the world of college football for the past few days that's why i'm here to help you let's go through them really, real quickly one through ten is clemson alabama ohio state notre dame iowa jumps baylor at six uh stanford oklahoma state lsu utah 11 through 15, Florida, Oklahoma, Michigan State, Michigan, TCU drops to 15. 16 through 25, Florida State, Mississippi State, Northwestern, UCLA, Navy, Memphis, Temple, North Carolina, Houston, and Wisconsin. I don't know how Wisconsin is back in. They have no quarterback. <laughs> the running game is ugh, inconsistent. And Houston, how are they still at 24? That is my problem. Houston, like I said, can beat majority of these teams. Houston could beat Wisconsin. Houston, North Carolina, that'd be one heck of a matchup. Houston most likely is, well, they're going to have to play Temple and Memphis anyway, so we're going to see, uh, and, and Navy. Um, Houston could beat UCLA. Houston could beat Northwestern. Houston could beat Mississippi State. Houston could beat Florida State. Houston could beat uh, Michigan State. Could beat Oklahoma. Could beat Florida. Could beat Utah. Could beat Oklahoma State. Oh, I don't know. Oklahoma State looks kind of good now. <laughs> After shutting out TCU. Oh, such a heartbreaker. All right, let's move on to the... Actually, whoa, we got to do our picks. We got to do our picks. Almost almost forgot. And uh, college football... Um, let me see. It's not going to be in order. It's only going to be in order by time. So we're just, that's just how we're going to rock it. With uh, Kansas and TCU at 11 a.m. Kansas has yet to win a game. They are 0-9. TCU just coming off their loss to Oklahoma State. TCU is a 45.5 favorite to win this game on Fox Sports 1. Again, 11 a.m. Central Time. I'm going with TCU, of course, and uh, I have the winning pretty big. And really, for them, they got to put the style points for, you know, whether we're out of the playoffs or um, for a New York, New York, New York Six uh, Bowl. They got to put style points. They got to beat this team, especially how the last couple of years we barely beat Kansas. It, it can't be like that no more. This has to be a 56 7, 62 7. I, I say we put 70 or 80 points on Kansas. I know they're, they haven't won a game, and it's just like, oh man, you're going to feel bad. No, 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 no. Nobody cares for TCU. That's why we have to put 70, 80 plus points on them and, and just crush them. I don't care. They haven't won a game. Sorry, Kansas. That's just how it goes. You're going to beat us in basketball. You can do it then. I don't care. Right now, TCU, you got to blow them out. 
Number 11, Florida on the road at South Carolina. Florida 8 and 1, South Carolina 3 and 6. Florida a 7.5 point favorite. This game is on ESPN. And I'm going to take, obviously, the Florida Gators here. I feel like they're going to have a good bounce back. But I'm not going to be surprised. Halftime, it's going to be that weird score of 13 to 7, 13 6, some weird score like that. And then Florida pulls away in the second half. Number three, Ohio State on the road against Illinois. Ohio State, a 15 point favorite. This game is on ESPN or might flip between uh, where you live. I'm going to go with the Buckeyes here. I hope Illinois can give them a game. I hope Illinois can win. But I got Ohio State here. Maryland on the road at Michigan State, who is 13th. Michigan State, a 14 and a half point favorite. This game is on ESPN 2. And uh, I'm going to take, uh, obviously, Michigan State. I-, I just wish Maryland was good. I like some of the uniforms they have. And Maryland is, is you know, when it has Stephon Diggs there, it was fun to watch them. Uh, just Maryland, what has happened to you? Uh, Purdue at Northwestern. Going to go with Northwestern here. Florida State be I, I don't know. North Carolina, Florida State. This could be a good game. Um Florida State, a nine-point favorite. I feel like that's a little too high because the game that North Carolina State gave Clemson, obviously Florida State competed a lot better than North Carolina State did, um, as as well as saying by keeping the, the points a little bit closer. North Carolina State does have an offense. They did put 40-plus points on Clemson, while Florida State only put about, what, 13? I'm going to take... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go upset. I'm taking North Carolina State to win this game. I know it's on the road, but I like North Carolina State. Ever Golston being out a couple of weeks, and I'm not blaming it on the injury. I'm just saying he's been out a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm gonna go North Carolina State here. Number two, Alabama on the road against Mississippi State. This game is on CBS on at 2:30 p.m. Central Time. Alabama seven and a half point favorite. As much as I want Mississippi State to win this game. So it can knock out Bama and put them, at, I guess, at four because a two-loss Bama is better than any team in the country. Uh, that's just what the committee thinks. Um, I think Alabama wins this game. I- I'm hoping Dak Prescott could do something. Please, Dak Prescott, beat Al- have Alabama lose. I really, what I want, since it looks like TCU is out of the playoffs, I really, I'm hoping, I am hoping, I don't care if it's at the Sugar Bowl or wherever, I am hoping it is TCU versus Alabama in a bowl game. I, that is what I am praying for. I want that so bad. Because if, if TCU could beat Alabama, which I believe they have a chance, then it would do wonders for our recruiting as we've lost already two commits now. And uh, it and would be huge. It would be huge because then they'd be like, well, they actually beat Alabama. I mean, I'm sure they'll come up with some excuse, but I, I just want to see Alabama TCU in a bowl game. Uh, Clemson against Syracuse. As much as I want to root for Syracuse, it's not going to happen. This game is on two at, on ESPN two and at two thirty Central Time. Clemson a twenty eight point favorite. I'm going with Clemson here. Miami at North Carolina. As much as I root for the U and they you know accepted me to university, I still won't know financial aid for forever. Uh, they just they just don't want to tell me. This game is on ESPNU. I got to go with North Carolina. Uh, they are just on. A, Ryan Switzer is a mini West Welker. He's one of favorite receivers. He is absolutely a beast. North Carolina, a 12-and-a-half-point favorite going with North Carolina here. Wake Forest at Notre Dame going with Notre Dame. Oklahoma State at Iowa State. Now, remember, back in 2012, I believe, Oklahoma State was a top five team. I think they were even number three in the country. They went on the road to play Iowa State. It was a night game, and Iowa State did the impossible. They beat Oklahoma State. Will that happen again? I don't think so. <laughs> but um, if we're all looking for playoff you know, craziness, then... Iowa State being Oklahoma State would cause a huge, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. Big 12 might kill itself once again in this. Uh, I've seen, I'm sure you all have seen all the different plans that could happen, all the different scenarios that could happen with the Big 12, who beat who, how they beat, and uh, how the committee would view it. 
But this could be bad if Oklahoma State lost. Now, as a, as a TCU fan, just because we're in the Big Twelve, that does, that and most likely out of playoffs, that doesn't mean I'm saying you know I want oh I want Oklahoma State to win it all now. You know, show the Big Twelve. You know, show everybody what the Big Twelve has, or or I want Baylor to win it all, or whatever. No, no, I don't want any of them to get in. I want TCU to get in, and if TCU loses the next, uh, you know, two out of the three games, I still don't want Baylor in. I still don't want Oklahoma in. I don't want Oklahoma State in. It's not being salty. It's just that's not the teams I'm rooting for. I don't root for the conference. I root for my team. But yeah, I'm still a little salty, I guess. Oklahoma State will win. Michigan at Indiana. I'm gonna go with Michigan here. Navy, or excuse me, SMU at Navy. Uh, gonna go with Navy. And here we go, Memphis. At Houston, the game we all want to hear about what's going to happen. Six o'clock on ESPN two. Houston a seven point favorite. Going to go with Houston. I am rolling with them, and hopefully this gets them a huge boost. I don't see them going into the playoffs, even if they were undefeated. Uh, it's wrong, but that's just how it is. I am rooting for Houston though to get this W. Justin Fuente, I know you're a TCU guy, but sorry, got to go with Houston. Uh, Temple at UCF. I'm going to go with Temple here. Arkansas at LSU. This could be a really good game. Now that Arkansas has scored, I believe, 50-plus points in the past three games for the first time like ever for them. This game is on ESPN uh, at 6.15 East, or Central Time. LSU is 7.5-point favorite. Going to go with LSU. Oregon at Stanford on Fox, 6.30. Stanford a 10-point favorite. And guess what? I'm going with the Ducks. I know their secondary and their whole defense is absolutely garbage, but Vernon Adams and this offense has seemed to find something rolling. And uh, I think this is what they do. Remember, Stanford was always that team to beat Oregon when Oregon was highly ranked. It's time for Oregon to turn the table here and uh, get them. I'm going to go with Oregon. Oklahoma at Baylor, ABC, 7 p.m. Central Time. Baylor, a two-and-a-half point favorite, and I'm going Oklahoma. This is t- o- Baylor's first real game. I am going to, for Oklahoma to win this game and cause some craziness. Oklahoma wins it. Minnesota at Iowa. Minnesota, you're our only hope. Seriously, you are our only hope. <laughs> Please win because nobody wants to see Iowa – in the playoffs or anywhere close to it. Iowa does not deserve to be there. Come on, Minnesota. Help us out. Utah at Arizona. Going to go with Utah here. And Washington State at UCLA, 9.45 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. UCLA a 10-point favorite. I am going Washington State. I, I think the Cougs get it done. They need a big win. I think they can do it against UCLA. If it goes to a shootout, uh, Luke Falk has just been almost unstoppable. I'm I'm going to go with Washington State and go Cougs. Get this W. Let's move on to the NFL. And I, not a whole lot of news on the NFL, um, but just some kind of weird stories here. Carolina Panthers cornerback Josh Norman was fined $5,000. $5,000 by the NFL for wearing patriotic cleats during the su- Sunday salute to service game against the Green Bay Packers. Now, I know to an NFL player, $5,000 is about the three quarters I have sitting on my table right now. But still, that's ridiculous. Norman said the league told him that he uh, that the fine had more to do with having, this is the worst part, that the fine had more to do with having the words, quote, proud and brave, written on the side of the cleats uh, than the red, white, and blue colors that didn't match Carolina's Panther scheme. He's fine mainly because it said proud and brave for the salute to service. Are you kidding me? It's ridiculous. Now, this isn't the first time Norman has been fined. Last season, he was fined $11,000 for wearing predominantly silver cleats in a game against the Minnesota Vikings. He got half of it back on a, a, off on appeal. But, and, and he's also giving the cleats which he is autographed to the USO of North and South Carolina for auction. Money will be raised to help the troops in Fort Jackson in Columbia, South Carolina. Norman is a native of Greenwood, South Carolina. And this is what he had to say, quote, just to give that back to them and give them hope and let them know we care, uh, care about them and love them as well, end quote. 
This is ridiculous. The NFL is finding Josh Norman not because of the color scheme that does not fit the Carolina Panthers on his cleats, but because of the fact that it said proud and brave that it, that it was for a game that was salute to the service. Why? I don't care. I don't. I, that's just stupid. That is so stupid. The NFL. Why do they do this? Do they feel good about themselves to say, "Yeah, we're gonna find you," and we're? It's mainly because we have a problem with you wearing a cleat that says "proud and brave," even though it's it's towards the men and women in service. Sorry, but five thousand dollars. Man, that is just it's it's ridiculous. It really is. Uh, New York Jets quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick confirmed that he will have surgery today in Manhattan to repair a torn ligament in his thumb uh, on his non-throwing hand. Fitzpatrick expects to return and play in the Jets' next game in Houston on November 22nd. Fitzpatrick has played two straight games with a torn ligament in his left thumb since suffering the injury uh, in a 34-20 loss at Oakland on November 1st. Fitzpatrick has suited up with a brace and a protective glove on his non-throwing hand, and in last night he completed 15 of 34 passes for 193 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions, and 22 to 17 loss to Buffalo. Uh, the Jets head coach Todd Bout, Bowles, excuse me, not Bowles, <laughs> Bowles, uh, has also announced that Jets lost running back Zach, uh, Zach Stacy to a fractured ankle. Stacy suffered the injury on a kickoff return at the end of the first half and had to be carted off the field as both teams ran into the locker rooms at halftime. And therefore, the good thing they had signed Stephen Ridley, even though he really didn't do too much. He saw his first action last night, but I don't know if you really call it action. He had three carries for minus one yard. Ouch. Uh, St. Louis Rams cornerback LaMarcus Joyner has been fined. This one I, I agree with. $23,152 by the NFL for his illegal hit on Minnesota Vikings quarterback Teddy Bridgewater on Sunday. The, not, the hit knocked Bridgewater out of the game, uh, a 21-18 Vikings victory in overtime, which Sean Hill had to finish up the game for Minnesota. Mike Zimmer of the Vikings called it, quote, a cheap shot in his post-game news conference and pointed his finger at the Rams defensive coordinator saying, quote, Greg Williams' defenses are always like that. Uh, and LaMarcus Joyner did say this, quote, I can't fix what happened. Like I said, it wasn't intentional. I know in my heart that it wasn't intentional, and I sincerely apologize for it. I hope he's ready to, uh, to go for his team on Sunday and continues to win football games for them because that's a good organization over there, end quote. Bridgewater, meanwhile, was in the league's concussion, concussion protocol this week. It was a full participant in practice Thursday, and the quarterback is expected to start Sunday at Oakland. Um, yeah, that was just a nasty hit. Now, whether that was on purpose, you know, who really knows? Um, but I mean, when, when you're gonna, when you know you're about to hit the quarterback, I understand you want to get that shot because you rarely, especially at a safety or a cornerback position, you rarely are able to hit the quarterback, and uh, you know, you want to just. Because you, obviously, when you hit the quarterback, it shakes him up a little bit. You know, they they feel uneasy in the pocket, helps you, whatever. You don't take a, a a big upper shot on him. Go for his, you know, do what Demarcus Ware and Von Miller did to Andrew Luck, except just don't try to kill him in like in a car crash. Lower in, in the in the waist, chest area, legs. Do not go for the head. That's exactly what. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner did that was intentional to go up and hit him upwards and try to get a big hit he could have wrapped him up and just thrown him to the ground none of this would have happened but that's just what how it went Seattle Seahawks running back Marshawn Lynch showing what a great guy he truly is check this out after a win against the Cowboys on November 1st he stopped at a Dallas area's McDonald's where an employee offered him a compliment I uh, said quote this uh the guy's name is Terrence Downs. He told TMZ, quote, I told them I liked his shoes. They were navy blue. I have no idea. Boost boost miss? I, I don't know. I can't. And and anyways, and how I wanted to buy a pair, and we all started talking. According to the report, Lynch asked the 17 year old what he wanted to do with his life. Downs explained that he wanted to go into fashion and wanted to own a uh, a bouquet. Lynch 
apparently liked what he heard and gave Downs $500 to buy a pair of the shoes and told him he wanted to see him grow. Quote, uh, this is a McDonald's uh, spokes- spokesman told TMZ, quote, Marshawn left a huge positive impact on Terrence, which is true. And that's awesome um, for Marshawn Lynch to do. He didn't have to do that. Just went to go buy probably double cheeseburger. Who knows? That's what, that's what I get. Um, but that, that's awesome for him to do that. You know, um, he could have just said, hey, thanks, kid. You know, stay in school. Don't do drugs. And, uh, you know, keep rooting for us Seahawks or Cowboys or whatever. Just thanks. Then after, he gave him $500 and said, hey, buy the shoes, you know, and, and I want to see you grow. Invest in yourself you know, and, and learn how to grow. That's that's perfect. I like that. Marshawn Lynch. Uh, let's see. We got this right here. So I wish this is where it was video right here so I could show you. But anyways, you guys can cho- go, go check it out on uh, NFL ESPN or just type it in. So as we all know, last last night we had the Buffalo Bills and New York Jets. They were the Jets were all green. Buffalo were all red except for the helmet. The Jacksonville Jaguars will also wear all gold. They're called the Bold Rush jerseys during their next week, next Thursday's home game against Tennessee. The jerseys, along with gold pants, were unveiled Thursday night, uh, last night, again, for the Bills and Jets game. The Jaguars will also wear gold socks and gold cleats. The Jaguars' normal two tone helmet will remain the same the gold and the black. Uh, will remain the same, though apparently the gold of the jerseys and the pants do not match the gold on the back of the helmet. The uniform was designed by Nike, of course, which has also des- designed the Jaguars' current uniforms, which UniWatch, which is a, a great uh, Twitter to follow and uh, also their website to follow, ranked last in the NFL in its power rankings on uniforms. Uh, with the two the, the two tone helmet called the worst in NFL history, this all leads to the NFL's new color rush campaign introduced to uh, you know to just be something different with Nike. Tennessee is going to wear an all blue uniform. I mean, it's usually all blue anyways, unless they wear the you know the white pants. I don't I haven't seen anything on their uniforms uh, just yet. They might have been out. I just I haven't looked at it just yet. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do, whether it's a light blue or it's a dark blue, or how they you know mix it, because they already have blue uniforms. But um, I don't know. This is just weird. And because of that, some colorblind viewers were unable to distinguish between the Buffalo Bills red uniforms and the New York Jets green uniforms. Former New York Giants kicker Lawrence Tynes was one of those affected in during watching the game, saying, "Quote on Twitter." If you are colorblind like me, this NFL game is going to be hard to follow. Buffalo Bills versus New York Jets. And check this out. According to the National Eye Institute, as many as 8% of men and half a percent of women worldwide within uh, Northern European ancestry are in some way colorblind. Recent estimates suggest, suggest that 10 million Americans suffer from it. And guess what is the most common color blindness? You guessed it. Red and green. The exact colors both the Bills and the Jets were wearing. Some NFL fans on Twitter said the Jets and the Bills players look green to them. A view uh, also said that the, the green turf was too much. I, I don't know. I don't know how that got into it. Maybe it was just because of the colors reflecting with the field. I, I, the field has always been green, so I, I don't understand. Um But again, the Color Rush campaign will cover four Thursday night games between now and the end of the season. Instead of one team wearing a dark jersey and the other one wearing white, as the league traditional requires, both teams will wear primary colors of their third, uh, excuse me, of their alternate third uniform. And uh, (laughs) this is pretty funny. For the Bills part, the uniforms were mostly well received, although head coach Rex Ryan said at times he grew confused about which team was which, saying, quote, when I looked out there, it's and it's tough enough. I've spent six years in New York. I ain't the smartest cat of all time, but I spent six years coaching in green and white, so you kind of get that in the way. But, hell, I look out there, and I see my teams in red, blue. I might have had a chance, but I'm like, who are they? Oh, shoot, that's us. 
it's so different by the way the red looks pretty cool i might go with that instead of the blue one end quote so pretty funny quote by him um but yeah i really did like the uniforms of course it obviously that's you know it, it sucks for the people that are colorblind because yeah you're seeing two dark color uniforms and you're not knowing who is really which without you know having to hear it um running back LaShawn McCoy said he liked the uniforms and that they looked nice and fit well but that in the heat of the game uh they weren't they were bigger concerns saying quote you know what when 300 pounds are chasing you you don't even recognize that. All that stuff looks the same, seriously. Bill's linebacker, Nigel uh, Bradham, said he thought the uniforms were, quote, amazing. Uh, I like the red. It's sometimes it's, it's something different, excuse me. But I like the alternate colors, being able to switch it up and stuff like that. Red is my favorite color, end quote. So, again, I, I liked, you know, again, I like the uniforms for the Bills. I wish they would have gone with a chrome helmet. Like the Jets did, I love. I think the Jets should keep that chrome helmet. I, I think that should be their helmet for the rest of ever because it's just nice. Uh, the green colors, though, they should have just stuck stuck with the the dark green that they have. Um, I really like the dark green that the Jets wear. This lime green that they were wearing, I'm telling you, it was ugly. It's an, it's not even Thanksgiving yet. We just got over, uh, you know, Halloween, and it looked like Christmas out there. I. I don't know. It's weird. But anyways, let's go ahead and preview some of these games real quick. Go through our picks and wrap up the show. Uh, be, uh, be, before we go through all that, I got some interesting news first. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24 seven. Great news. I am finally getting a new computer. It's happening uh, possibly tomorrow. I don't know. We'll have to go look through some today and tomorrow. So we will have a new computer, which allows me to do things with Spreaker.com's uh, new, they call it an app, but it's not really an app. It's just a software um, that allows me to do more things and add more effects and other great stuff that have been, again, like I've told you, told you guys for the past two, almost three months now that I've been wanting to do with my show, but I can't do it with the equipment I have right now. Anyways, we'll be able to do that possibly it's going to have to wait until next Friday's show once I get everything settled in. Um, also, we're going to have a new intro for the short sports show. I can't get about, give it out just yet, but again, it most likely will be Friday when we'll have it up. I've uh, And we also got a new interview with a music artist who is doing the, the intro for us. It's going to be exciting. Um, you guys are going to love it. Most of you have already probably heard the song, but... That's uh, for you to guess. I won't give any hits just yet, but it's going to be exciting. It will be revealed, and we should have him on the show uh, Friday or for Friday's show. So it's going to be exciting. Be sure, to, again, to follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7. All the links are down below in the description. So there's, you know, click on all of them, Facebook, whatever it might be, whatever your taste is. I will post it up when we have it up to let you guys know. All right, now let's go over to do our picks. Cowboys at the Buccaneers. Cowboys two and six with a six-game losing streak. Buccaneers three and five, uh, just inconsistent. Tampa Bay a one-point favorite. This game is on Fox at 12 p.m. And I'm going with the Cowboys here. I think they get the victory. I know Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers offense is somewhat getting things going. Doug Martin uh, coming back to life, the, the the muscle hamster. But I, I just think. Cowboys, even though they have struggled the past six games, each week they're getting better. Each week they're getting better. It's, it's not changing the result, but each week they're getting better. And I think this is a team where they're just, they're just that much better than Tampa Bay that they should get the W. Unless, they, you know, Matt Castle ends up throwing like three or four interceptions somehow, then, well, you, you shot yourself in the foot. But this game should get the Cowboys back on the winning roll and get ready for Tony Romo to come back next week so going with the Cowboys to win this game Cardinals at the Seahawks a Sunday night game on NBC Seahawks a three-point favorite I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks here I I I just think the primetime game Seattle fans the 12th man of the NFL is they're gonna be rocking they're gonna be crazy they understand how important uh, how important this game is to put them back in the NFC West 
race and, and, and beat the Cardinals, who are obviously the division lead right now. Get them a W. Seahawks win this game. I'm going to say 27-23. Seahawks get the dub. Lions, 1-7 Lions on the road at the Green Bay Packers. This game is on Fox, 12 p.m. Green Bay, 11-point favorite. I'm going with the Packers here to get this W. I'm taking the Lions on the spread, but I'm going with the Packers here. I think the Packers, you know, the past two games, obviously they played two undefeated teams and lost both, uh, lost both of those games to them. Lions, obviously not anywhere close to that, but this offense looks like it might be turning to another page. For the better, going to take them on the spread, but Packers end up getting the victory. Uh, Panthers, 8-0, going against the Tennessee Titans. Titans got their first win, or excuse me, their second win last week. Carolina, a a 5.5 point favorite. I really want to take Tennessee here. I want to go with Marcus Mariota, but he should have had an interception against uh, the Saints when that turned into a 61-yard touchdown to the Delaney Walker. Going to take the Panthers here, but I hope the Titans can win this just for Marcus Mariota's sake. Uh, Bears at the Rams. Kind of go with the Rams here. Got to. Uh, just a better team. Saints at the Redskins. Going with the New Orleans Saints. Dolphins at the Eagles. This was a tough game. Philadelphia is a five and a half point favorite. Um, Dolphins defense just looks absolutely torn up. I mean, they look bad. They look terrible. Eagles... I mean, they're not. They have an offense, but it's not like they can just move the field, move down the field as, as much as they want to. I really want the Dolphins to win this game, but I think the Eagles do get the W. Browns at the Steelers. Going to go with the Steelers here, even though Landry Jones is starting. But I think an unhealthy um, Luke, uh, Luke McCown, even though they're just going to throw him in because they hate Johnny Manziel. Um, I, I I want the Browns to win only if Johnny Football ends up playing. But if he doesn't, I'm taking the Steelers here. Jaguars at the Ravens. Going to go with the Ravens here. Even though Blake Bortles should probably have a field day with the terrible secondary of the Ravens. But I'm going to go with the Ravens just because they're home. Uh, if it was the other way, I'd probably take Jacksonville, honestly. Vikings at the Raiders. Another tough game. The Vikings defense has really turned up the past few weeks. They have really have a, have a solid defense. The Raiders offense, though, we all know Marcus Crab. Uh, Michael Crabtree, excuse me, um, and uh, Amari Cooper going off, Derek Carr doing his thing. I want New Oakland to win. Uh, I can't even talk right now. I want Oakland to win this. I'm going to go ahead and take it. I'm going to take Oakland. I'm going to take Oakland. Fans are actually going there, and I know as a Chargers fan, we're supposed to be rivals, but Chargers, we just sucked this year. So, I, I And I like the Raiders. I, well, I like Amari Cooper. So, and I like Michael Crabtree. I'm going to go with the Raiders here. Patriots at the Giants. And I'm telling you guys, this is the game. This is the game. The Giants will end the winning streak for the Patriots. I am taking, or actually, I I talked about the Packers losing to the undefeated teams. They they actually, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, because the Bronx, never mind. Uh, Screw that. Screw that thought. Um, Yeah, Patriots lose this game to the Giants. And Giants get it just because they're the home team. Giants still a seven and a half point favorite, but I think Odell Beckham is probably going to go off in this game. I, I really like the Giants here, taking the Giants. Chiefs at the Broncos. Uh, Broncos, their offense, West, their running back is doing a good job, you know, and in, in filling the hole for. Uh, can't even think of his name, Jamal Charles. <laughs> Already forgotten. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Broncos here. I I think the Broncos it's just that defense is just too good to, to give the offense too many opportunities and for Peyton Manning to do some things. Obviously he'll break the record this week with three yards all needed. Um, so I'm gonna go with Denver here. And then Monday night, yeah, not not the best of games. I mean obviously I like Dalton. I love um, I love me some Dalton TCU alum, but. That's just the best game. I mean, it's Houston at Cincinnati. Yay. Not really that fun. I am taking the Cincinnati Bengals, of course. I, th- I believe they're a 10-point favorite. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Bengals here. Keep rolling. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, I will be back Monday morning to recap all these games and talk about any other news that happens throughout the week, or throughout the weekend, excuse me. Hopefully tonight. 
not too cold. <laughs> but also, hopefully, my team, the Sandbox Rattlers, can get a W. And again, be sure to follow me on Twitter at short underscore sports 24-7 to find out when the show uh, is going to get its boost in the new intro, the interview coming up, and um, new equipment and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for listening. Again, it is all because of you, the support, or otherwise I'd just be talking to a mic and wasting about 50 minutes each, uh, <laughs> each Monday and Friday. But thank you guys so much for listening and sharing it with your friends and family. The show has continued to grow uh, tremendously. YouTube has finally picked up. The views are, are going up and up and up. So I appreciate it, guys, so, so much. And as always, God first, God bless. I will see you guys Monday. I'm out. Peace.